In this video, I'll show you how to make an easy and simple terrarium that can live for years to come. I'll do my best to leave links to everything I've used in the description below. Let's get straight into the build. I'm going to start by adding a layer of stones to the bottom of the terrarium. This is known as a false bottom or a drainage layer. It will provide a place for excess water to build up instead of sitting in the soil. For this terrarium, I use some pea gravel. It's very cheap and easy to get hold of. Some alternatives are leaker, or if you're on a budget, you can even use rocks and stones from outside. Just try to avoid rocks that are too large. Using the back of my hand, I ensure the stones are even and flat, with no high or low points. For a terrarium this size, only a depth of 2 cm or 3 quarter inch is required. Next, I'm going to add in a substrate barrier that will sit on top of the drainage layer. For this, I'm using window screen mesh. This will prevent the substrate from getting down into the drainage layer, while still allowing water to freely pass through. If a large amount of substrate was to be sitting in the drainage layer that is full with water, it would quickly stagnate and can cause a speedy end to the terrarium's life. Now it's time to make the soil mix, or more commonly known as the substrate. Here's the mix I've used to make over 2,000 successful terrariums. One part cocoa fibre, two parts sphagnum moss. You can trim the sphagnum moss up into smaller chunks so it's easier to mix in. One quarter part orchid bark, one quarter part worm castings, and one quarter part charcoal. All these elements combine to make the perfect terrarium substrate that holds moisture, drains well, is resistant to compression and provides nutrients for the plants. If you plan on making a lot of terrariums, why not make a large batch like I've got here? Just follow the same recipe but in larger quantities. A quality substrate can be the difference between a long-lasting healthy terrarium and a short-lived unsuccessful one, so it's important to get it right. I pour in a generous amount and then gently pat it down. Here I'm using a useful tool which is simply a stick with a cork in the end. I've sloped the substrate up towards the back of the terrarium. This will help create depth. As you can see, the substrate barrier is doing a great job of preventing the substrate from getting into the drainage layer, but it's inevitable that a little bit will get through. Now it's time to move on to the hardscape, and I'm gonna keep it really simple for this terrarium with just two rocks. You can make the hardscape as simple or as elaborate as you want, and technically you don't even need to add a hardscape. In this terrarium, I want to focus more on showcasing a feature plant, and I feel a simple and basic hardscape is the perfect way to do so. I'm planning on having the feature plant here and then it be surrounded by moss and small plant cuttings. Talking about moss, here's what I'll be using today. This is cushion moss. It's super easy to grow, low maintenance and loves growing inside a terrarium. I start by tearing it into chunks and then trimming off the base. Don't worry, this doesn't hurt the moss at all. Then with some tweezers, I carefully place it inside the terrarium and push it down onto the substrate. I then repeat this throughout the terrarium. Whilst I'm planting this moss, let me tell you about my terrarium making ebook. It contains everything you need to know from the best moss and plants to use, to the best types of microfauna, and everything else you need to know to make and keep long lasting healthy terrariums. I'll leave it at the top of the description and in the pinned comment if you want to check it out. As you can see, the moss alone has really brought the terrarium to life. Now I'm going to add some small plant cuttings to add a little more detail and interest inside the terrarium. This is Peperomia verticillata, and it has these beautiful turtle back leaves. It's super easy to grow in a terrarium, and best of all, it can be grown from rootless cuttings. As you can see, I've taken multiple cuttings from the mother plant. These can then be planted into the substrate or moss up to the first set of leaves. They will root themselves and start growing in no time at all. This is known as plant propagation. I plant the majority of them around the outsides of the rocks. Using tweezers makes this process a lot easier. Now I'm going to take some more cuttings, but this time from a photonia. This is one of the most popular plants to use in terrariums and I'm not surprised. It comes in a variety of different vibrant colours and it's super easy to grow. Once again, I took some small cuttings and will be planting them up to the first set of leaves. They will send out new roots in as little as two to three weeks and the high humidity of the terrarium will provide perfect conditions for them to thrive. Now it's time to move on to the feature plant and that is this beautiful peperomia. Its new leaves have a stunning red glow to them and they will grow a lot bigger than they are right now. Here's a mature leaf, for example. An interesting fact about this plant is that I actually grow it from a single leaf cutting, which is this one at the bottom. I've made a completely separate video on how to do this, which you can watch after this one. I carefully pull out the plant and remove any substrate from the roots. To plant it, I use a stick to make a hole in the substrate. And then with some tweezers, I carefully plant it inside. In the process of planting, I accidentally broke off this leaf, but it's not a problem as I can use it to grow a completely new plant. The terrarium is looking exactly how I wanted, but it's not done yet. 
These are springtails. They are tiny bugs that will literally clean the terrarium 24 seven. They eat things like mold and decaying matter, which can be harmful to the fine balance of a terrarium's ecosystem. The springtails help to keep the terrarium clean and healthy, and in return, the plants provide sufficient oxygen for them to survive. They make a perfect team. Now it's time to water the terrarium. I like to use a small spray bottle or a pipette as it allows you to more precisely control the amount of water going inside. Water until the substrate is damp, but not wet or soggy. If you're ever in doubt, remember it's much better to underwater a terrarium than overwater it. After cleaning the glass, I put the lid on and the terrarium is almost complete. All you need to do now is place the terrarium under an LED light or in a bright spot in indirect sunlight. Make sure you avoid direct sun. Now you know how to make a terrarium, watch this video for six must-know tips to keeping it healthy.